So in this question, uh, in this video, we will address the question: What American produces, and how we measure their final output. So first of all, let's give you a bunch of numbers. So that's the fact about the U.S. economy, in regarding what American produce. So the U.S. has less than five percent of the world's population, yet it produces over twenty percent of the world's outputs. So what can you say? Wow, very impressive. Yes, U.S. economy is very productive. So does that how we measure the what to produce? So actually, it's not. We actually have the already well designed index to measure、uh, the what to produce. And after we learn the index, and then we will look at it, compare with the rest of the world how Americans、uh, what to produce looks like. So the index we will look at in this video is called the gross domestic product. So you may not be familiar with this whole term, but you definitely heard about term GDP. So the GDP stands for gross domestic product. So the definition for the GDP is the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a nation's border in a given time period. So this is the definition, but、uh, in terms of application, it's more complicated than this definition. Therefore, I will emphasize a few very important uh, 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 concept among this definition. So the first, when we talk about the GDP, it is means the final goods and services. So if any services and goods considered as intermediate goods, which means It's not the goods for consumer to、uh, as a final consumption. Instead, you are using those goods to make more products. So in that case, those products are considered as intermediate goods or services, then they will not contribute to the GDP calculation. So, for instance,、uh, comparing the building and the steel, steel will consider as intermediate goods because. Uh, after people purchasing the steel, they were using the steel to build the buildings. So the building will be the final goods, but the steel will, is not. So why we try to only consider the final goods? Because if you think about for building a house, so the cost, the value of the house already including the cost of the steels. So if we also including the intermediate goods, our GDP's value will be inaccurate because they double counted the steel's price. So therefore, the GDP is only considered the final goods. So the second very important concept is about the nation's borders. So which means if we have a factory like,、uh, for instance, like Apple, if their manufacturer is built in China, so whatever they produce,、uh, the 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 money they made in China, they will not contribute to the GDP growth in America. So it on the op、uh, opposite example, if China had a Business and they are running the factory in the U.S. and they hire the worker here and they are、uh, using the local factors, uh, uh, selling the product to locally. So in that case, although the company belongs to the Chinese businessman,、uh, they still contribute to the U.S. GDP. And the third important concept in this definition is given time period. So usually GDP are reported the yearly or quarterly. So you has to pay attention on the time period they are measuring. So the quarterly and the yearly and the fifth five year they are all different. So the three very important information are including this definition. One is final goods services. Second is the nation's border, and the last one is given time period. So hopefully,、uh, after my analysis, you will have a better understanding in terms of what is GDP. And how GDP is calculated, and what should be included in GDP, and what shouldn't. And for the U.S. GDP, it comes for about one fourth of the world's GDP. And the U.S. GDP is relatively twice as large as China's, the second largest GDP. So、uh, again, you know, we here mentioned about China. So、uh, at the beginning of the semester, I mentioned I will bring the student to China to our nineteen two thousand is summer. The reason, really, for me to offer this course for people who already take in country twenty, for student who have the passion to run in business and economics, is because when you are 
entering the job marketing as a business major and um, an economics major, you should at least know how China looks like and then how their business are running. So that's why when I designed this course, I um, including a lot of training opportunities. And also you will be able to meet the student in econ and business major in China. So making friendship and hopefully in the future, and you will be able to do something big for you and for the country as well. So this is about the GDP. Uh, this is the one uh, index we use to measure what to produce. So the larger means uh, the country are produce more product. The smaller means the country produce uh, less product. And um, in 2015, the U.S. economy produced about 18 trillion worth of goods and their services compared to the second largest country, China, which produced only 11 trillion. Uh, besides the GDP, we have another standard to measure the what to produce. It's called per capita GDP. So uh, based on the definition, you should know per capita GDP actually is using the dollar value of the GDP divided by the total population. And so we call it the average GDP. So which means per person, uh, how much GDP uh, on average they contribute. So that is called a per capita GDP. So if GDP grow faster than the population, and the, uh, the standard living of your rises because we usually use the per capita GDP as an indicator of how much output the average person would get if uh, all out were divided up evenly among the population. So we can use to measure the standard of living. So which means if the, the higher value of the per capita GDP, so per person will live a have, you know, relatively richer life and we said they have a higher standard of the living. So obviously, the per capita GDP are affected by both by population and the GDP itself. So that's why we see if GDP grow faster than the population growth in the standard of living will rise. Oppositely, if GDP grows slower than population grows, then then the standard of living will fall. Standard of living will fall. And uh, uh, I also want to give you a couple uh, examples about the U.S. per capita GDP. With less than 5% of world's population, the U.S. produce far more output per person than other countries do. However, opposite case, in Ethiopia and Haiti, per capita income are less than $1,000 a year, which is less than $4 per day. So that what does that mean? That means the, uh, the life, the living standard of living in the Ethiopian and the Haiti is really bad. So that's why we have some refugees coming from those countries and they are really living a very poor lives. And so we talk about the GDP, per capita GDP, which is used to measure the standard of living. And the next one we will talk about is economic growth. So the economic growth is reflected as the uh, GDP uh, growth. So the GDP growth. So how America's uh, economic growth look like? So increasing in the output means economic growth, or in another term, we're using the PPP, uh, PPC model we learned from the previous lack, uh, uh, chapter. That means the expansion of the production possibility curve. So the production possibility curve will move outward. Move outward. So how the uh, U.S. GDP look like? So the GDP gap between the U.S. and the most of the, uh, mo the most of the world's poor nations keeps growing. So the reason for this growing gap is economic growth. And on average, so on average, so on average, U.S. output has grown by roughly 3% a year, nearly three times faster than the population growth. So the population growth in U.S. usually 1%. So if you pay attention on the recent presidential report, so the, uh, the passing quarter, so the U.S. economy growth uh, by 4.7%. It's really pretty high. So no matter what, for the U.S. fast GDP growth, low um, population growth. As a result, uh, not only does total output keep rising, but so does per capita GDP. And um, so let's look at a, a table. So we can compare the U.S. with the rest of the world. 
So the higher bar means the larger value for the GDP per capita, which means the, they have the better uh, standard of living. So the U.S. have the highest bar, so which means the, the people living in U.S. have the highest uh, standard of living. So besides that, pay attention on the poor nations. So you can find like China and India. So those nations demonstrate economic growth. However, in many other in other poor countries, so the total output has actually declined year after year, depressed living uh, standard. So for instance, between 2000 and 2015, Zimbabwe GDP declined by an average of the 1.9% per year. That's amazing. As a result, Zimbabwe output in 2015 was 40% smaller than in 2000. So with the negative economic growth and the 0.9% average annual population growth, Zimbabwe's per capita GDP fell below $400 a year with the two thirds of its population being on, on, on the nutrition. If a nation with a positive GDP like Haiti, West Bank, Gaza, they didn't grow fast enough to raise living standard. So obviously you have to know, Living standard is decided by both population and the GDP. If both of them are growing faster, it doesn't mean you're rising your uh, living standard. So you have to make sure you have GDP growing faster than the, uh, the, uh, the population. Then you will see the improvement in living standard. So next, we will look at the mix of the output changing in the United States. So in this chart, and you can find uh, during the um, past uh, 20 years, the U.S. mix of the put output has already dramatically changed. So the mix of the put is in any nation always included both goods and the services. A century ago, about two thirds of U.S. output consists of the goods, while one third of the output consists of services. You can see it from the chart. So in 1800, so the almost 90 percent of the uh, percentage of the employment is in agriculture and only about 5% is in the service industry. If you look at the 2000 dramatic change, so about 80% of the employment is coming from the services, only 1% is coming from the agriculture. It's not a surprise. So since then, over 20 million people have left the farmings and sort of job in other sector. So the relative decline in goods production does not mean the U.S. is producing fewer goods. Manufacturing output has increased fourfold since 1950. Today's mix of the output is simply different. So if you look at the developer pattern, and so what we found is um, the transformation uh, what we found is the transformation of the U.S. into a service economy is relative, uh, reflective of our high incomes. And obviously, in Ethiopia, where the most urgent concern is still to keep people from starving, over 50% of the output comes from the farm sector because poor countries can't afford it. Service are not produced and consumed there. So in general speaking, you will find in the World Bank, they actually classify country in three tiers. U.S. is a tier one, and we have tier three. So the country are defined as tier three, not only because they have relatively low value in the um, GDP per capita, but also they have relatively large portion of the agriculture sector instead of servicing the sector. So if one country have large service sector, usually we consider they are as a rich country, or developed country. For developing country, they more likely have a large portion of people are working in the farming industry. So when the country start to shift into the service industry, so we can see their st standard of living getting improved faster. And also uh, you will see uh, the whole economy will start grow healthier. And uh, But again, we cannot uh, survive without farm farm sector because we need food. Without food, our nation will disappear. So the agriculture sector is still very important, but we just don't see too many people work in that industry. So one potential reason might be because the machines development. So before we may need uh, 20 people work on the field. Now we only need one people and one machine can deal with all the works. So obviously if you're only using the employment measure, 
the importance of this, uh, the 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 uh, the industry is inaccurate, and so it's something for you to concern and think about it. So in our next video, and we will discuss how American produces, how the American produces.